All right, welcome back here, back on the main stage at Home Team Pub, 7990 Oswego Road in Liverpool, New York, right on Route 57. This is Wake Up Call with Dan Satora. Of course, I'm your host, Dan Tortora. We're here every single month with Liverpool Athletics. It's just what we do. We spotlight it. It was an idea. Joe Khalil, the owner of Home Team Pub, went to Liverpool. So he bleeds orange and blue. And I went to Joe and I said, I want to do a Liverpool show because these student athletes and the coaches and the people in the background, the administration, they deserve to be in the spotlight. Win, lose, or draw, we got to put them out there because Bayheim gets a show. We see Babers get a show, so why not give it to the kids? So it is with great appreciation that we get to have Liverpool Athletics here. The Warriors have been tremendous to wake up call to my company and to home team pubs. So we want to thank you. You've heard from Bryce Mills. You've heard from Jake Vaco. Now it's Max Mahalik that's going to be here with us, and Coach Mancuso is back. So, Max, you had the benefit of getting to sit and watch. Yep. So they had to know things on the spot. Jake had to kind of, like, break it all in and, and show everybody. what well, he had to be the icebreaker, and then Bryce had some time with it. But you had the most time. So there, there should be no uhs or ums or hmm. It should be just right off the jump. Smooth, real smooth. Yeah, yeah, I have some good questions. You got some good questions? You feel good about it? Kind of, yeah. Okay, kind of, kind of feel good. Okay. So I want to ask you about these two gentlemen because you're DB on the team, so you're on the defensive side of the ball, obviously, and we talked about that a little bit. Describe Bryce and describe Jake. Well, um... I've been playing with uh, Jake for a while in like uh, Pop Warner, Clay Panthers, and I'm, he's always been an aggressive kid. And Bryce, we actually went against him in Pop Warner. He was on another team, and he was just like ridiculous. So yeah. to have them both on the same team now is just kind of crazy. And I mean, it's 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 good. It's a good outlook for the season. How would you describe their personalities? I mean, they're middle linebackers. They got to talk to each other. They got to they have to run this defense. So. Do they get, they both said they're not very vocal, but can you feel their presence as a DB on the field? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, even though I'm not part of the linebacking core, I definitely still see how they're taking charge and um, they're just great leaders. You said that your favorite position as a defensive back is corner. Why? Yeah. Um, I mean, I haven't really played that position like really my whole life, but then when I got to uh, high school, I obviously wasn't as big as all the other kids, but um, I guess I was quick, so they put me there, and I kind of just took the mold of that position. And you like that face up, having that opportunity to go man on somebody? Yeah, I think I just understand it really well, so I feel like it's just like kind of second nature, and it comes really easy. All right, coach, yeah. what do you think about Max? I think I think he hit it on the head. You know, um, when he came up, we had him at quarterback, and he also plays receiver as well. But you know, he's a very good athlete. Um, but I think his niche is, is one thing that he, I think he's really good at is, is in the secondary. He is, he is a great secondary coach, and, you know, he's a retired uh, counselor from Liverpool who's awesome with kids. And, you know, coach every, every few years will say, that kid's special, that kid's special. And not just athletically, but just as a person, character, and someone he can trust at all times. And that's, that's Max Mahalik. He's, he does an outstanding job for us. You hear that. That kid's special. We can trust him. What does that mean to you? Uh, it definitely means a lot. I mean, I just try and do whatever I think that will make the coaches happy. So if that makes them happy, I'm just going to keep doing it. Fair enough. The drive for you, what made you fall in love with football in the beginning? Tell me when it started and, and what, what about football made you just fall in love? Well, um, when I was younger, I think my dad kind of he played football, so he obviously wanted me to try it. And... Um, he signed me up for, uh, went to sign me up for flag football, but they asked me if I wanted to play Tiny Might and go right into hitting. So I took it from there and I just played every single year since probably like first grade. And the passion for it for you, has it only grown at this point? I mean, where, where is it from where it was back in first grade? Oh, yeah, it's definitely, definitely coming now towards my, uh, could be my last years of playing. So it's definitely, I'm trying to, I don't know how to say it. I'm just trying to make it like last because when I was younger I had like oh I have all this time in front of you and now it's like right here so do you feel that I mean it's, it's funny how they say you don't know how fast it is till you know how fast it is so, you know parents say all the time kids are babies and then they're 20 you know people say oh I was 21 and now I'm 45 everybody talks about it after the fact 
Is that, are you feeling that right now that it was like, like you said, I got all this time to play and now here you are stepping into this season. Did it speed by? Do you feel like it, it went too fast? I mean, how do you see it? Yeah, last season I definitely, last season went really fast and then it kind of hit me this summer like, okay, this is my last, this could be my last year playing. So I got to just leave everything out on the field like Jake said earlier. Coach, Max is a captain. Why? You know, and he's in the same grouping as the other two. You know, when the weight room's open, he's in there. I never have to worry about him walking in late, walking into class late. You know what I mean? He does the little things right all the time. And the teacher sees me and says, oh, Max Mahogs, one of your football players. He's such a nice kid, blah, blah. He does all, all the things right, you know, and he's a good leader. You know, when we're in the weight room, he tells kids to quiet down, pay attention, you know. And, and, and just so you know, Max was, was the last. We, we have some really good kids on our team, but uh, Bryce and Vaca were captains. Um, we announced it last December, I believe, at, at, our, at our football banquet. And we wanted to wait and see. And, and again, there's other great kids, but, you know, Max, he, he, there, was, there was nothing on that list of mean things saying, why should I give it to this kid over him? He did everything right. And when you're doing everything right, you need to be a captain. You talk about how... People say, oh, he's so nice, you know, when he, coming into class and whatnot in school. Does that niceness shift on the field? Do you, oh, do yeah. you see him shift? Yeah, it's, it's Jekyll and Hyde in a good way. You know, you know, he's nice, and he hits real nice. You know, I mean, it, it, it's, it's different. You know, he, he goes after the ball. He's very aggressive. You know, uh, yeah, you're right. He smiles a lot and stuff like that. But he's all business, you know, you know when the ball snapped. And uh, I think that's outstanding. Where does the aggression come from? Where do you, everybody takes their energy and focuses it, you know, when, when you get to focus that onto the field, where does it come from? What's kind of maybe your secret sauce, so to speak? I mean, I think I'm a pretty nice kid, like in general. So I don't really show any like anger, or meanness, meanness towards anyone. Yeah. So when I'm on the field, it's kind of like, I could, if I could hit a kid, then I'm going to hit the kid and <laughs> not get in trouble. So. Who pushes you the most in practice? I'll definitely say Bryce and Vaco because they're two captains because they're like always on, on um, basically everyone to try and just be their best. But then I'd probably say uh, Braden McLean also pushes me because he's kind of at the similar like skill level as me, and we're always kind of competing. So I'd really say him too. How does how does he make you better? How does McLean make you better? Um, well, we share the field on defense together, and I mean. Last year he was on the field too as a younger player and we always just try and maybe just like one up each other, try and do good, like more hits than other people. When Coach Mancuso just said, you know, we named Vaco, we named Bryce the captains and then we wanted to wait to see who would emerge. Just what you can say about getting that other opportunity when you know the two captains that you have and then hearing your name called. Yeah, I was definitely, um, I, I knew what they were looking for and they, we're trying to see who would step up as like a leader and I knew that I had to take that role on if I like if I like it or not to be a captain and I'm definitely um proud of uh like the work I put in to get there but I'm also like thankful that coaches chose me are you vocal we know these two guys say that they like to show it are you vocal or are you another guy who goes out and shows it um I wouldn't say I'm that vocal maybe okay. here and there but I'm majority of the time I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out and show it so who is the most vocal leader on the team? Uh, Jake. You say Jake, okay. So you, you all said that you're more showing it than being vocal, but you still think that Jake says enough. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Coach, who is the most vocal in your opinion? Yeah, I, I could say Coach Kosman's probably the most vocal <laughs> person I've had on my staff and as a player the last 15 years, but uh, um, in a good way, too. Okay. Um, but, you know, that's contagious. You know, when Jake starts hooting and hollering, the other kids start hooting and hollering in a good way. You know what I mean? And when he, when he you know, brings that big voice out, I think the other kids kind of, the captains as well as the other seniors, they, they chime off of that. Yeah, stop fooling around. Be quiet on the sideline. It, it happened today, you know, because, you know, we have 60 kids in our program. Sideline management is huge, you know. I mean, there's 22 out in the field. Everybody else is on the sideline. And Baco, I heard him a couple times telling the kids, be quiet, be quiet. And then I heard the other kids and the other kids. And uh, so it, 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 he's vocal, but it's in a very good, positive, contagious way. So when you look 
at the makeup of this team. You and I spoke about kind of what you see yeah. this year yeah. and what you've taken away so far. You brought guys here that predominantly have spoken about the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. Who are some of those offensive catalysts that you have this year? Oh, we, we, got, some, we got some real good offensive guys. Uh, on our offensive line, we have uh, uh, Nate Grazier. He's only a sophomore, but, you know, he's six foot three and a half. He's about 280, and he can play, you know. Um, you know, we have uh, Kyle Cave is one of our wide receivers. We have Dom Scro, who's another wide receiver. Uh, Noah Silfer is a tight end who's outstanding football player, and I think you'll see his showcase throughout the season. Um, we got some good young quarterbacks who are competing for a starting position, you know, and uh, they're all doing a good job, but we're waiting for that one guy to take the edge. Um, but by far, defense wins championships, and I think I think we'll have a, a good offense. We have at, at our tailback spot, you know, Bryce is one of our rotating guys at tailback, but Takari Mack, uh, Malachi Upshur, uh, um, uh, there's, there's a couple other kids competing for that, Daria Nixon, who are all competing for those spots, who so will all be productive. Um, but the bottom line is give us the ball back. Just keep giving us the ball back. Give us the ball back. We have a good offensive line, some good receivers. You know, our backs are good. You know, Jacob plays uh, offense as well as defense. You know, Max will be out there on that side. But, you know, the thing you, that people know for us and know we're going to be good is defensively, but I think our offense can be pretty good. You said your quarterbacks are still fighting for that job. Yeah. Has anybody squeaked in front? Is there a chance we could see more than one quarterback at this point? You know, I, honestly, it's, it's only been four days. You know, uh, you know, it, all, the, all the quarterbacks are working hard. And, you know, we have a lot in our offense. Yeah. So it's not an easy thing to just jump in. You know, you know 10, 15 years ago, you just ran toss. You know, you, just, you had five or six plays. Well, yeah. now we, we have five or six checkoffs for each play, you know. And um, so it's hard. And we graduated as a senior last year. So we have to find a replacement. And the kids are all competing. Um, the scrimmage next Friday, we have a, actually an inner squad next Tuesday an orange-blue game, and that'll be a, a great opportunity for those quarterbacks to compete, and we evaluate them. I sit down with, I sit down not only with the quarterback coach, but with the wide receiver coach, you know, because we like to hear from the wide receivers and see who they like, because the, the rotation of the ball, the speed, the zip, who's making the right reads. So there's a lot. Quarterback is a difficult position to fill, so uh, we're in no rush to make that decision. I've had years where I've had two kids yeah. rotate every play. I've run the play in with the quarterback. I don't have a problem with that if they're both at the same level. Okay. Fair enough. And I want to kind of keep with that. How would you describe your offense this year? I know we talked about the different positions, but overall, because you said there's a lot to the offense. Yeah. It, well, uh, you know, if you had to say what kind of offense do we run, we're, we're a pro-style offense. We're an, we come out, you know, and I'm not saying that we're the New England Patriots, but similar to them is they'll be in the I formation, and then they'll come out and spread. And that's what we like to do. You know, if I can go against the team and I can run the ball all day long, I'm not going to throw the ball. If uh, we're going against a team that has a real good frontage and we know we're going to struggle, we're going to be in more multiple formations and we're going to do uh, some different things to try to manipulate that situation and throw the ball more. Um, you know, there's games that I've won throwing the ball, even though we're a running team, and vice versa. But if I can run the ball, that's what I like to do. And I, I think we have some good kids up front, so... I'm hoping, I'm, honestly, I'd love to be a 70-30. I'd love to run the ball 70% of the time and throw it 30. All right, fair enough. Max, what do you think about that? How, how is it in practice? How would you describe? I know all you guys are playing on both sides, but we talk about being a DB and, and a lot of love that you have for that position. So what's it like going up, the, going up against the offense you have? Um, yeah, they're definitely uh, very dynamic. They could do a lot of different things, and they um, definitely have a lot of depth, especially at, like, running back, and we have two – uh, three good quarterbacks competing for that spot. So I think we always keep teams kind of guessing. You know, it's only been a few practices, but what quarterback has been hardest to read? Um, hardest to read? Probably our youngest one, but that's just probably because it's his first year on varsity. He's probably pretty nervous. So um, probably be Jalen. Who's, who's the one that's caught you a few times? Uh, I'm not sure. I, Brendan and Aaron have both been doing really good, so I, 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 can't, I can't pick one yet. Okay. All right. Fair enough. What does it mean to you, Max, to be a Liverpool Warrior? Um, 
definitely it definitely took something like you had to earn that so probably like hard work uh dedication and um dominance dominance hard work dedication and dominance coach response to those words used to describe the team uh, he, he hit it on the head you know i mean our motto is is for years has been return to dominance you know return to dominance return to dominance and i don't think it's something you other than maybe a few years in the 80s when we were just one of the better teams in the country, you know, we want to return to it. It's just like saying getting 100 in a class. I don't know if you ever get 100, but you always want to be perfect. You always want to get that A, A+. Plus, and we're always striving for that, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I'm excited about these kids. And, and, they, and you know, and the words that they're using are the words I like to hear. Max, before we get into rapid fire, tell me something about coach that you like the most? Um, well, coach has always been at my practice since I was younger because I played with Brendan and Pop Warner. So definitely how he just stuck with me and uh, trusted me and um, eventually was able to give me the captain spot. So definitely appreciate that. Coach, what did you see in Max so many years ago? Did you see something special? A while, a while back, did you maybe see it in the beginning? Yeah, you know, so, I don't know, five, six years ago, he was playing Clay Panthers, and my son was playing, and, and uh, I remember seeing him run out in the field, and, and, you know, it doesn't take three hours to evaluate talent. You know, as a coach, you're always evaluating talent. It doesn't matter if you go to a basketball game. And I saw him, and I go, wow, he, he can play. You know, and the first thing I said is, he's a Liverpool kid, right? Because they get some of the CNS kids over there. Yes, he's a Liverpool kid. I'm like, all right. But uh, I knew he was going to be successful. Fair enough. Okay. So, with that being said, Max, you've had the longest amount of time. Yep. So I hope your questions are ready. Yep. It's our final rapid fire with Max Mahalik and Coach Dave Mancuso. And, of course, myself, Dan Tortora, here at Home Team Pub 7990 Oswego Road in Liverpool, New York, every single month, Liverpool Athletics, right here. And we will have the football team back. We're going to pack the pub with this football team. Oh, yeah. Coach Mancuso and I talking about this because we had a lot of stuff coming up. Yep. Ari told me about the whiteout that you're having, right? You're oh, having, yeah. a, you're oh, having yeah. a whiteout coming yep. up. Yep. So a lot of great things to look forward to with Liverpool. Max, I'm going to ask you my first question. That is going to be, I got to dig deep into the brain here. There's a lot of rapid fire questions I've asked before. If you could trade places with anyone in the world, who would it be and why? You say Tom, somebody say Tom Brady. I don't ever want to hear that on my show, ever again. No, Tom Brady is one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever live. We all know it. I just don't think he's the GOAT, which got 500 people in Boston, 500 Twitter messages, 500. So I can't wait to go to Boston and say hello. Um, I'll probably have to say uh, Dan Blazarian. Okay, why? Uh, he's just extremely rich, and he's like looks like he's living his life. So okay. that seems fun. Dan Blazarian? Blazarian. Blazarian. Okay. Coach, I, I like this question. I'm going to stick with it. If you could trade places with anybody in the world, who would it be and why? Uh, if I could trade places with anybody in the world, yes. who would it be and why? Yes, sir. Uh, it would probably be my son because, uh, he, you know, I would love to be younger again and have the opportunity to do, you know, you always, hindsight is always twenty twenty. So to be, no, no, I don't want his hair. I don't want his <laughs> hair. But other than that, um, you know, he reminds me of myself. So I'd love to be back in time, be my son, and, you know, competing for the quarterback job at Liverpool High School. Would you cut your hair? Oh, yeah, I would definitely cut the hair. I don't, <laughs> like, I don't like the flow. But other than that, that I guess that's where I would, who I'd want to be. All right. What's your question for me, Coach? My question for you. All right. If you were attacked by a shark <laughs> and you were going to lose a limb, would you rather have it be the arm and the leg and why? The arm or the leg? Oh. That's interesting. You know what? I, <laughs> I stumped you. Yes. I, I would rather, I guess I'd rather lose the leg. Okay. Because they got some pretty good bionic legs and stuff going That's on right now. Give me some point. hops. Yeah. You know, and, and I don't, I don't want to have one arm. You know, I don't, I know I could do the, 
but it's Bionic you're Italian. Italian. You got right, you got it. Yeah, I mean, I got you got to talk with your hands. So uh -huh. I think I'd have to keep the keep the hands and. So it's a leg. It's a leg. All right. All right. What's your first question for me, Max? What is your biggest fear? Wow. My biggest fear. That's a great question. I try to live life as fearlessly as possible. I'm not afraid of death. That's something that I'm not afraid of because I got a lot of good people up in heaven looking down. So the day that that comes, hopefully a hundred years from now, but the day that that comes, I know that hopefully I've done enough right things to be back in good company. But what am I afraid of the most? Not getting to spend, well, I'm getting real honest with you guys here. Not getting to spend the rest of my life with a partner that could equal me out. So to not have a woman that could truly equal me and give all the love back that I give, I'd have to have that. There you go. There you go. All right, Max. I'm going to stay with it because you made me get real deep on that one. And it's live and it's here forever because it's on the internet and I can't delete it. <laughs> I meant it though. I meant it though. What is your biggest fear? Probably like big spiders. Mine is finding love and having it be something forever. Big spiders. How big? Like, like you know, let me show you the one that I found in my house. Now, I'm going to tell everybody about this because if you don't believe it, it is true. And I know that it's true because it just happened. So if you don't believe me, I mean, you're going to have to come up here and look at the picture. But... There's, okay, so there, this is a spider that was above, you can't really see it, it's kind of fuzzy, but, right, it's fuzzy. So, there was a spider in my house a couple weeks ago, and I hit it, but I didn't hit it the way I wanted to hit it. I took somebody else's advice, right? So, I want to take it with like, you get like the napkin, and you crush it, and then you throw it out. Well, they told me to get the shoe, but when you hit the shoe, it bounces off. So when it bounced off, it disappeared. Here's my theory on spiders, and this is true because it showed up on my ceiling. When you don't kill it, it's like a soap opera. If you don't see it die and flush it down the toilet, it's not dead. So what this spider was doing is that I injured it, and it was training. So it stayed in my room. It was training. It was getting back to full health, full go. Then it was above me, and right before I went to bed, I don't know what made me catch it, but it had come out of the vent. And it was ready to just like come down and attack me while I sleep because it was revenge and it had been training for at least two weeks. So my theory is true and that spider is dead and I killed it the right way this time. I grabbed the napkin and I flushed it in the toilet. And then I flushed the toilet again just to make sure that it went down. All right, coach, what's your biggest fear? Uh, I think you hit it on the head, death, because there's nothing after that. You don't think there's any life after death? Oh, let's not get philosophical here. <laughs> I just don't ever want to die. That's so bleak. When you die, it's over. Oh, uh, well. I'm not going to worry about it because it ain't going to happen. I'm going to stay alive. You're going to stay alive I, forever. As long as I can. Okay. What's your next question for me, Coach? Me? Yes. Um, All-time athletic superhero. Who's the guy Who or the person? All-time athletic superhero. Who, who, who do you say is, is you, your biggest role model, you know, the man. Not LeBron. Not good, Tom Brady. Good. Oh, look at that. I said on Facebook that it wasn't LeBron, and they stopped my video. They did. Look at that, Facebook. See, Facebook says that you can be yourself, but obviously that's a lie. So we're going to, as soon as I said not LeBron, we got kicked off. Apparently there's somebody trolling this for us. Maybe LeBron's on here right now. So let's, let's get this back up here so we could do this the right way. All right, Facebook. Well, I said something negative about LeBron James, and you kicked me off. So just to make sure if, if this will happen again, I'm not a LeBron James fan. With that being said, okay, my biggest sports influence of all time. Wow, that's tough. I would say i probably go with the one that I want to meet the most, who's passed on. Okay. And that would be Ernie Davis. Oh, Good answer. So it would be Ernie because, I mean, I know, I know about his life not a ton, but my grandmother, uh, G, I call her G Mama, she lived to be a hundred and a half in nine days, went up to heaven, watching over me, playing tricks on me all the time. 
and she watched Syracuse football forever. She remembered Ernie Davis, all that, uh, big time fan. And I would just love to talk to him. I mean, I mean that, the man was 23 years old and he passed away of leukemia. Yep. And there was really no way to help him. It was so quick. Yep. And I, I just, he had 23 years to live. And I feel like we don't truly live until somebody tells us we may not be here. Yeah, so I would love to know what he did with those 23 years and what he would do with 23 more. And yeah, I would love to talk to him. That's awesome. That's a good answer. Thank you. Max, what's your final question for me? If you were to interview another high school football team besides Liverpool, who would it be? I'm, do I'm doing it next week, Wes Jenny. So, yeah, we, we work with, with uh, we do at the Wildcat, we talked about, so I have Wes Jenny, so Corley and I will, yep. will be talking. So, I, like, I mean, in all honesty, I want to talk to as many teams as possible because I want Central and Upstate New York to get exposure. Yep. So, it's so hard when somebody's like, who do you want to win? Because I want you all to win. I'd love to play New Jersey and beat, beat the hell out of New Jersey because who likes New Jersey? But the reality of it all, yeah, Don Bosco, there you go. But the reality of it all is I just want to see you all succeed. And, I mean, that's, that's what matters to me is getting your names out there and hopefully getting some people to, to look at you and give you an opportunity or whatever it may be down the road. I just I want Central and Upstate New York to know that they're loved and respected and appreciated and that you have a home on wake-up call because I really don't care if nobody else gives it to you. We're always going to be that home for you. So. Liverpool's got me for as long as you want me. Awesome. Awesome. All right, Coach, what's your final question for me? Um, if This person has to be living. Okay. If you could sit down and have dinner with anybody in the world, with any country, any, any place, who would that be? Mm. It would be, if he was still alive, it would be, so, it would, it would be Robin least, Williams. Robin. If he was still alive. Oh. But I know that's a good answer because I love Robin Williams. Yeah, but he's, this fan. has got to be. So got to be living. Got to yeah. be living. Yeah. If I can sit down with anybody, mm. and have dinner, going through my wheelhouse right now. You know what? I would have to say. Can I say two? Because it's different reasons. Sure. Okay. So the goatee, and not that it's just a traditional goatee, but that it goes up the side a little bit. That's an ode to Tony Stark, aka Iron Man. I want to sit down with Robert Downey Jr. Oh, so definitely because I think him and I have a very similar fervor. Like we have a similar love for life, and we have a similar kind of just we never we're never without energy. Yeah, yeah. So it'd be really cool to do that. Yeah. I'm gonna throw Will Smith in there too because I've always loved Will Smith. All right. And then my my other one that I originally said so it'd be Robert Downey Jr., Will Smith, and the other person I'd sit down with. Oh man, it just slipped my mind. I had it, and then I love. Oh, Dave Chappelle, because I love Chappelle's show, and I love the comedy, and I love all that. So I want to sit with Dave Chappelle, and one of my friends knows Dave Chappelle, yeah. and still hasn't made that happen, which makes me very upset. So I've had. I, I didn't mean to upset you. No, I want to. I want to get to know Dave Chappelle. Okay. All right, Coach, you have a choice. I want to. I, I'm going to appreciate what the team thinks about this. Okay. You can be a stand-up comedian a doctor or a pilot what do you think your team would trust that you would be most successful at oh jesus a stand-up comedian a pilot, doctor or a pilot pilot wow because i control the ship man i control it okay i'm, I'm the guy is that kind of, do i get nods as huh? pilot pilot no. what no from your son Okay. I know those three, yeah. See? Okay. Yeah. Your son said no. What do you? What would you say? Stand-up comedian, pilot, or doctor? He's not smart enough to be a doctor. <laughs> so you'd have to you'd have to be a comedian. Yeah, I guess so. Hey, okay. nothing wrong with making people laugh. Okay. Fair enough. All right, Max. My final question for you: If you if you walked around everywhere you went from here on out, like the moment you say it, it appears over your head and it stays with you forever. There's a neon sign that has a statement in it. What would you want that statement to say that follows you everywhere? From now to the rest of your life, there's going to be something right above you to describe Max Mahalik. What does it say? Uh, that's a good one. Thank you. Um, 
I want to do a couple good ones, but I'm doing this for 17 years. I hope I can get one good one. Um, I'm a good guy. I'm a good guy? Yeah. Okay. Why? Very simple. Why? Um, because I am. Okay. I'm just a nice guy. And just want people to know. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I mean, it's a good answer. <laughs> All right. With that being said, Max Mahalik and Coach Dave Mancuso, this is Wake Up Call with Dan Satoro. We are on the main stage at Home Team Pub. Liverpool Athletics is here with Wake Up Call exclusively every single month, once a month. To find out when, go to Facebook at Wake Up Call DT, Twitter at Call DT, Instagram at Wake Up Call underscore DT, and we will announce it as soon as it happens. We will have the football team back, and you can always come to Home Team Pub, 7990 Oswego Road in Liverpool, New York. Thank you, gentlemen. Round of applause for these gentlemen. Show them some love. Give them a little bit here. Max did a good job. You prepared. You prepared. All right. And, Coach, you, you had the most questions you had to ask, so that was good. Well, thank you as always. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys.